Roll up your new character. Yeah, that's what I forgot to do this week. Maybe that a healer. Means... Just saying. Maybe someone who knows healing word. <laughs> You're gonna really to... giving up only tank for someone who has healing word? <laughs> only tanks. <laughs> Don't worry. Rangers get healing word. I'm going to multiply class and do it for b <laughs> Also just saying, the healer feat with healing kits is actually pretty good. Just throwing that out there. So, uh, speaking of which, he wants to tell me what happened last game. This is the story of how Gideon died. <laughs> this is the story of the death of Gideon Belmont. He died fighting Ratman. New York rats. Man, these suckers were big. <laughs> It was the epitome of what's the worst could happen. And wandering in blindly with optimism. We were just going to have a talk with the Miller. We didn't really expect him to give us anything useful, but we were going to talk to him. And turns out he was being harassed by rat folk with really sharp knives. They nearly stole my corpse. They tried, but Marcus, Marcus prevented your corpse from being stolen. I mean, I would have appreciated Marcus preventing my corpse from being a corpse, but, you know. And, yeah, I mean, he tried. <laughs> he tried like hell. He was shooting things near you. He was, he shot a rat trying to drag your body away. He's, it's not his fault that you have a really bad luck. And that I agree. It's completely Gideon's fault. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Marcus would agree with you as well. Yeah, so we went to go talk to the miner. Uh, when we got to the miner, oh. the, uh, we found out that the miner was being held captive by rat people. Mm-hmm. Uh, we took battle. Gideon head first. Um, and Gideon got stabby stabbed. Poked plenty of holes into him. Um, and then Danielle followed suit. After which they defeated the rats. And the only thing that Marcus can think to do is take him to the crone I mean I guess he could perform CPR <laughs> well we did get a wheelbarrow did get a oh, wheelbarrow well, I, I untied the, the miller first and then he gave us a wheelbarrow gave you a <laughs> that's right because Danielle's unconscious right now too yep. yes. she's so... unconscious but breathing I'm unconscious but not yes Right now, we are the weirdest parade walking through town. <laughs> uh, so, you guys heading back to town? Heading Where are you to going? The house. You're heading straight to the crone's house. All yeah, right. we're not even. I'm not even. It's the only thing I can think of to do. She seemed like the quote unquote healer to me, right? Yeah, question mark. Sure. Something like that. That seems like a hospital, right? I just have this mental image of Marcus like running through town, pushing a wheelbarrow <laughs> with, with a two dead bodies guy. And out. <laughs> Ironically, there's a gnome like trotting yeah. after him as fast as his little legs can carry him. <laughs> Ironically, this is probably not the first time he's done that. <laughs> Push a barrel full of bodies while being chased by a gnome. He was a hell of a life. Uh, well, it probably wasn't being chased by a gnome. Probably chased by Nazis. Nazis? Uh, he's had dabbles with Nazis and, you know, crazy tribes of... Mexico? Yeah, it's a good time. Good time. He had fun. <laughs> Alright, so you all head back to the Crone's house. With a wheelbarrow full of bodies. 
Diesel's probably carrying Gideon's stuff on the way. Uh, I'm trying to figure out how Marcus would approach this situation. Mm-hmm. Run up shouting, help! <laughs> he would politely knock on the door. Mm-hmm. Straighten himself out, you know. <clears throat> politely knock on the door and wait for an answer. Yeah, yeah. The body's up to look respectable. <laughs> Up him up a little bit. Just like to point out that this is like 15 minutes after the crone told Gideon he's got to shape up. <laughs> it was like it's like an, an hour, but not very long. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, she opens the door, wa- looks at you all, unsurprised, stands away from the door, and gives you all room to bring in the bodies. Would you? <clears throat> Would you like them in a wheelbarrow, or would you like them one by one? Just bring I... bring them in, and we will deal with it. It's a small matter of price before we discuss services. Marcus goes and wheels the wheelbarrow into the small room area hut. Sets it down, you know, close to the table, not knowing, you know, that's probably what he would have done is thrown them on the table. Mm-hmm. Pr- so, price. Um, now... I've read some things, and I know there are, at least where I come from, folk tales about those who can, well, you know, bring one back from the dead. So, what would be the price? Now, I've read some pretty drastic prices that, and he just stops and listens. Yeah, she seems unconcerned by the bodies that have been brought in. Um, she sits down at the table, takes a sip of her drink, and looks you all over. I am seeking an item, which you are definitely more likely to run into than I am. You are explorers, are you not? I was at one point in time, yes. Um, I think I still am. What is it you seek? I am very good at fighting items, that I can promise you. Looking for something called an artifact called the Corinthian. Diesel's writing this down. Uh, what what does this uh, Corinthian thing object look like? Oh, it's about yay tall, and she holds up her hands about a foot up, uh, apart. Yeah, it's in chat. Um, hold on, wrong chat. It's got a glowing blue center and some pillars. It's, I mean, supposedly I've never seen it. Is it like, is it a necklace? What what, what building? Oh, it's like, it's like like a statue. And she kind of motions her hands like about a foot apart. So it's not small. Would you say it's of a certain 
creature. So I would like to draw it out so I have a better idea when I see it. Is it more humanoid? Is it more animalistic? Is it more um, bestial in itself? Or It's an artifact. Right, but the, the statue itself, is, is it in, in the image of a person or a creature, or is it just... She goes to her bookshelf and starts digging through the books. Finding you a picture, because it looks like you're going to need it. It certainly makes life easier. Of course, I can always take a description. I'm used to working off descriptions. Wait a minute. I'm grabbing a picture for it. Oh. This is going to be very low quality. All I would expect from a drawing of some sort. There. Like I said, it's it's a very small. I couldn't find a better picture. Almost lantern-like. Yes. Just start sketching it out in the book. Is it... <laughs> Marcus's interest is now intrigued. Um... Do you know... Is it from... A certain civilization? Uh... Is it uh, who was the last ones to have it? Do, is there any word on that? She's kind of watches you all. It's not going to be easy to find. I made no promises as to that. Nor do I expect you to find it anytime soon. But I imagine if you're going to be Hopping across dimensions like demented frogs, you'll probably run into it. Do I think uh, we should be aware of this item, such as like if you look on like the third screen of this lantern like object, you turn into a three toed sloth or something like that. You know, I think we should be aware of or cautious of or. It requires a bit of doing to get it to work. So, I don't think you would activate it accidentally. So it appears that you're well aware. It appears you're aware that we're certainly not from your world. This world? Yes, I am aware. Fair enough. She's gonna move over to the bodies. <laughs> right. This one. And she points to Danielle. Simple tonic she do. And she kind of goes to a side table. Digs through. Pulls out um, what is going to be a healing potion. I know this says a lot, but Cecil is scribbling notes. He's, he's obviously he doesn't have a clue of what he's looking at or, or what she's doing, but he's still scribbling notes away, trying to get an inkling as to what she's doing in hopes of gleaming something out of it. Well, she pulls out a vial, um, kind of not gently cranks Danielle's open mouth open and pours it in. Uh, Danielle, you come to consciousness in the crone's house in a wheelbarrow um, on top of a dead Gideon 
with five hit points. Dear Liza, dear Liza. Interesting. So it's some kind of tonic that is I'm able to... Yeah, be coughing and try to sit up. <laughs> so... And Marcus is kind of talking to him, so... What kind of concoction is that? It's not that complicated. It's a health potion. Next time you get sent on one of these, I recommend asking for a few. Otherwise, that happens. And she points to Gideon. <laughs> Whiskey is, is not a health potion! She <laughs> yells at, at his dead body. <laughs> Trust me, that is duly noted for our next endeavor, for sure. Cecil walks over to Danielle. Come, come now, let me. He might want to get up. Lord knows what type of a state he'll be in when he comes to, or he probably smells, to be honest. So you might want to move anyway. His case is more complicated. She goes to a side table and begins mixing. All sorts of fragrant, fragrant herbs of various... It smells. They smell like smells. Um, that is certainly a smell. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, too. <laughs> um, yes. Yes. Some of them, at least one of them, is strong enough to kind of make your eyes water with like a faintly burning pepperiness to it. Um... The cup she brings back is smoking, um, and faintly blue and luminescent. I'd say this is the strangest thing, thing you'll ever drink, but I know better. And she pours it in Gideon's mouth. Gideon. Yeah. You were fighting, you were fighting a bunch of rat people. And now something just awful is filling your mouth. Everything, everything hurts. Frankly, everything kind of hurts. And you have two points of exhaustion. <laughs> and, you, and you're in a wheelbarrow. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. Where am I? What happened? You get a quick smack on the back of the head. I told Ow. you to be careful. Why am I... Why am I in a wheelbarrow? Because well, quite frankly, you were too heavy to carry all this all this way. Let's just say that you, um... Well, you can't handle a pack of rats very well. I know a dead pack of rats doesn't beg to differ. I'm going to try to just, I, I try to get over it. I end up just rocking back and forth and tipping over the wheelbarrow and collapsing on the floor. Just Ow! A damn sloppy mess. I know it's not common for you, but I would highly recommend taking a bath of some sort. I'll take it under advisement. Cecil has a flask out that he's just about to hand to him. Then's like, thinks, yeah, this might actually do more harm than it's good for once. Puts it away. Well, I've got a headache. Oh, oh, friend, you have a lot more than a headache going on. Tall one is right. You do have a lot more than a headache is going on. But it brought you back, and thankfully, your mother was a bit of a hand with potions, wasn't she? Uh, what do you know about my mother? More than you, probably. Now get the hell out of my cottage. Well, well thank you. I really appreciate your assistance. 
Might Definitely. I recommend not heading into the woods tonight? It's a terrible plan. Go rest. Yes, I, I do believe a, a night's rest would probably do us all the worlds of good. Bathe. See, even she knows what I'm talking about. You really should think about taking that bath. Can someone please just explain what happened to me? You died. You're not dead anymore, but for us, that's not exactly a new thing. I don't know how else to say that. But why don't we, why don't we leave um, our, our friend here's abode, and then we can explain it on the way to where we'll be staying tonight. And we probably should remove uh, the wheelbarrow. I don't think she wants it left in her, in her study. She's also picking up the... We're trying to pick up the wheelbarrow and push it out. <laughs> Marcus will take the wheelbarrow from it. Again, thank you. We really appreciate your assistance. And I'll be on the lookout for that statue of yours. And Marcus will walk out the door. Probably with Gideon still in the wheelbarrow at this point. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> but no, really, what happened, Gideon says as he follows the others out. <laughs> I'll well, kind of nod to the crone and kind of limp my way out after them. This will turn to go, bam, Tip, tips the hat a bit, bows a bit, and walks out. Well, he is extremely wobbly on his feet. To say the least, you may have eaten a sword or two. Um, in which case you, uh, I, I think you probably bled out, um, and died. And the only thing I could think of was to bring you back to the crown. Well, you're serious. I died fighting Ratman. Yes, you, you were slain by Ratman. Well, they knew how to use a sword, at least. Not that just swords. They, they uh, had some magic to them as well. Right, they weren't, they weren't simple creatures. And they were tough little bastards. Wait, the crone brought me back to life? Yes. Yes, just now. Oh, shit. What do we owe her? What do uh, I owe that's... her? She didn't bargain for my soul, did she? Oh yeah, she yeah, bargained. Yeah. She definitely bargained for your soul. I don't expect it was worth very much. Uh, a rare statue of some sort. That's something, at least. I have a good feeling we probably should find this rare statue at some point in our adventure. Uh, because I have a feeling the outcome for you, judging by, of course, the fact she brought you back to life which is a very rare trait um but uh you yeah we should probably find it and we need to find some of those potions she was talking about those those uh, elixirs those um potions of health those ones that that, that brought uh, you know, lovely danielle here back and I don't know if we need the ones that, that well, I mean, it probably would help to have the one that brought you back as well. No, those hits stink. I don't know if we'd want to carry those around and attract every creature around. But... I'll look over at Danielle. Did you die too? No, she was still breathing. I mean, I feel like I might have, but I'll take his word for it, I suppose. She was, oh, no. she was close to death. I mean, anything would help, I believe. It appears as though none of us are really of the um, the medical profession, as it were. Oh, no, not even close. Well, uh, not close. I'm a different kind of doctor. Right, unless you can stitch up wounds and heal broken bones, I'm afraid that won't do much for us. Well, I mean, I could stitch you up and 
probably reset a bone, but I doubt I could, you know, bring it back to life. Cure wounds like this one over here with this potion thing. When we get back to that to that manor place that we originated from, I'll have to look through some of the books there. Maybe there's some type of a, I don't know, incantation or something that we can use or that I can use or or something I can learn. I don't know. This is all quite new to me, but I will say that uh, what we what I did do today did come in handy, if not peculiar. Still staring at the fingertips of it. Peculiar is only one way to describe the day's discoveries. You know, I actually read about something like that that could bring you they think I think they called it the Holy Grail. Of course oh, obviously yeah. didn't believe that it was necessarily true, but you know The Cup of Christ, of course it's true. Bird in a tome somewhere, guarded by an internal guardian of some sort. Tests, okay. all kinds of challenges, so on forth, so forth. Mm -hmm. Yes, accurate. Very accurate. I had a great great uncle who went searching for it once before. Like Don't know. He, he wasn't successful, was he? The only thing that came back was a book describing his exploits, so. If he did survive, he's. Took off into the night. Uh, can I make a history check on that? Sure. Fourteen. Uh, Fourteen. Yeah, there's. I mean, people have gone looking for the Holy Grail since Christianity. Mm-hmm. Oh, I I know all about it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm more looking the name for... Belmont has... You've run across the name Belmont when it comes to adventure books and fortune hunting and tomb robbing. It, 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 it's not an unknown name, and you probably read the book at some point if it was published widely. I'll leave that up to me. Was that published widely? Um... I would probably say no, but uh, people who have read the book probably went on to describe it in other works, so it's kind yeah. of like yeah. word of mouth. Uh, Secondary dozen sources. different accounts of like, this is what happened. So, no, this is what happened. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's one of those books that's referenced by other scholarly tomes when it comes to discussions of the grail not generally serious um generally with an air of uh-huh of course sure that happened um you did not just go to the you know to you know the desert and really just trip out on some cactus juice like okay varying oh, levels of credulity when it comes to that particular tome I've been on those types of adventures before. I never did hear... I did some research on the Holy Grail itself, but I never... I'd heard of the name Gideon before. Interesting to actually meet. I thought he was a folklore. <laughs> Belmont or Gideon? That one. That Belmont. would really affect the kind of sarcastic response you would give. <laughs> I don't know, what did Gideon get into? I might have done some research on him, too. Um... um I... DM's purview, but I can think of one case that the Belmont name might have been uh, associated with uh, uh, fairly recently. Yeah, I think it was mostly just the Jack the Ripper case. Was there anything more recent, though? Nope. Mm. There um, were definitely some Belmonts associated with the uh, 
the search for Jack the Ripper. Yep. Yeah, but um, Marcus when Marcus is more yeah, into too. searching Ancient for artifacts. Ancient history. Yeah. Yeah. No, not particularly. Marcus just continues walking at that point. Gideon is very unsteady on his feet as he was walking. Do you need help? Nope. Nope. I've got it. It's just like being drunk without the benefits. Why don't you just use the wheelbarrow while we have it? Well, I'm just getting a ride in the wheelbarrow while someone pushes me. Well, I can I, assist. I mean, not, not well, but I can try and assist. I mean, I can push a wheelbarrow with you in it. If that is what you need. As appealing as the idea might be, I feel like I've suffered enough to indignities for the night. I think rest is what you need, friend. Right? Yes. A good night's sleep. And a drink. I wouldn't That's... recommend a drink. It's the help with a good night's sleep. Everything's too bright and Loud. Uh, I, th I think that, in fact, might be partly you and partly what brought you back to us. Mostly you, though. Not as much as you might think. Well, we definitely need a rest. If nothing else, all of us could use a rest. Just to get our strength back and figure on what we're doing for tomorrow and then go from there. Did anyone end up speaking with that miller? Uh, I did when I untied him. Is it consist of, or are you all right? Might be wise to go finish your conversation with him. I mean, after all, I think he owes us one at this point. But what he well does, I die for that man. If you, if you three want to go to the inn, I'll take the wheelbarrow back and see what I can find out. Well, sounds good to me as I hobble off. I think I will probably join you. Danielle, you might want to go get some rest, but I think I can help our friend here. I'm slightly unclear on you and your, our friend. <laughs> well, we'll be... Pronouns, mate. Might want to use them. Well, I was going to help Cecil here go talk to the miner. Miller. That one. <laughs> yes, I I think I'll also head to the tavern and hopefully recover a bit. She's like got her hand up over shading her eyes. It's like look basically she looks like she's got a migraine. <laughs> Very well, if you two will head to the inn, we will go talk to the mill. All right, split the party. This will be fine. Always is. Always is. So let's handle the tavern group. Let's check in with the tavern group first, shall we? I don't even know how to split the group. I have not figured that out. Huh. Well, figure it out later. Um. Uh, 
the tavern. You arrive, it is, um, quiet. The friend, the barman, is still behind the bar, um, but it's empty. This is, it's almost eerily quiet, because you, it's, taverns are not supposed to be quiet, and yet, um, it's like walking into a silent restaurant, just kind of off-putting. Putting, but kind of comfortable for Gideon right now since everything hurts and everything's loud and bright and everything, oh, he just wants to drown out the stimulus. Everything is exceptionally loud and bright for you. Good sir, we have returned as promised. He gives you a nod. Right, I've got some dinner on then. That would be wonderful. I believe there was talk of a room for us. Um, tie upstairs is free. Would it be possible to have some food and drink sent up? It's not really a place to eat up there, but sure. It's fine, I'll make do. And I look over at Daniel. I think I need to go to bed. You'll be all right, Danny. Oh, you heading up to rest as well? Yeah, I, I'll probably eat first and then head upstairs. Just perfect. Let me see if our friend here knows anything about those rat men. Yes, they weren't quite expected, were they? Nope, those were certainly unique. And I'm going to start to hobble up to uh, wherever rooms the uh, innkeeper uh, sure. points me to. I just open the... All these doors are open, so let me just open some. Excellent. Pick of the litter. The first one there. Oh, game paused. Bathtub. It is a bathing tub. Um, there is a pipe leading to it and a pipe leading out from it. It is not fancy. But it's large enough that you could fit in easily. I'm going to sway a little bit in the doorway as I stare at it and then I'm... I'm going to go fiddle with the knobs to, uh... There is no knob, it is only lever. And it's... the water is not hot. Uh... Lukewarm? Ish. Like, the water's been in the pipe for a hot minute, so it's heated up by the outside. But... It's not hot. Is it... Is it really cold? I guess that's, it's not that's super his biggest cold. concern. It is, it is reasonable. It's, it is not It'll going to be... It'll do tepid. Yeah, it's tepid. It's not, a, not sort of the sort of bath where you're probably going to lounge and feel all your muscles relax. You will get clean, though. Uh, and there oh, is yeah. soap and a towel. So. Let's see. Gideon... Oh, he would have actually enjoy the soak right now but that water is not very inviting they'll probably just grab a rag to like wash off his face and some blood stains and then just collapse into the bed i mean it's pool temperature it's just not like bath temperature not good enough <laughs> yeah so just gonna wipe off the blood a little bit and then go to bed yep all right <laughs> 
the reason I didn't <laughs> the reason I didn't bathe is because my standards are too high. <laughs> <sighs> Said the monster hunter. Said the monster hunter. Um yeah, Danielle, you're gonna stay downstairs. Um you were brought a beer, a tankard of beer, um uh, and, and a pretty sizable meat pie. It smells really good. Thank you so much. Yeah. I'm happy to have a customer, tr honestly. It's been a bit slow and dreary. Is it really that bad? I mean, I noticed you were slow earlier, but I thought it was just the time of day. Most everyone's out hunting. Hunting? Trying to find the children. Oh, of course. Sorry, for some reason that is not the first place my mom went. Has anyone come back to with any information since we left? Nothing reasonable. Talks of some rat people. But it seemed a little And that's the first you'd heard of them? Yes, it seems a little seems a little preposterous, honestly. He sniffs. I, ironically, we did run into some ourselves. They're almost the size of a man and walk upright and carry weapons. Very odd. <laughs> That's pretty odd. <laughs> and you saw them, right? Like not just your friend that when he points to the stairs. No, oh, I was stabbed. I I saw them before I was stabbed. Um, maybe lock, I'll, I'll lock up a little bit tighter tonight than I usually do. I would definitely suggest more... What, the more doors between you and the outside world, I think, at this point. Probably for the best. You know, it's... I will, uh, tuck it to my meat pie, eat, like, a quarter of it, and look up. Am I meant to share this with, uh, just before the stair came? <laughs> no, Bob. I'll bring him his own. There's plenty. All right. I did just want to ask before I ate dinner, and he woke up starving, and I had to listen to him whine about it. <laughs> <laughs> he laughs a little bit. You see, he's not. An, he 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 does uh, head up the stairs a few minutes later with a meat pie and a tankard. Um, you, you you notice that that tankard is not filled with ale, but in fact water. <laughs> I nod appreciatively. All right, windmill crew. Mm. Mm. You are not there. You are not there. He is here. But no longer restrained. Hello, friend. Yeah, you approach. Um, he's he's there. He it looks like the bodies have been kind of put into a pile. Um off to the side like he's not quite sure what to do with them like he's they're near to the river so like it looks like he's dragging him towards the river and maybe debating on whether or not to chuck him in um he gives you a nod as you approach may I suggest burning those things just throwing it up there thought they'd smell bad mm. True, but better than throwing them into a river. Throw them into the river, they just go downstream. Yeah, but then doesn't it become a problem for those who are down the river? He shrugs. I would I like to, uh, to ex problem. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to examine them before you get rid of them. See if there's any clues. He points to the pile of corpses. Be my guest. Yeah, 
investigation check? Sure, yeah. Whopping ten. I don't say shit. Ah, these are giant humanoid rat people. Um, they do not seem to be wearing much in the way of clothes, though. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Is it a cantrip or an action? Ah, shit. It's a. It's a level thing. I could do detect magic, but nope. I've used up my magic. Alright. Well, here's your, your wheelbarrow, by the way. Well, pushes it off to the side. Thank you for your use. Thank you for bringing it back. I appreciate it. So, did you um, come for a thing, or...? Well, uh, we came to ask you about the Marcus kind of looks over at the body. Man rat things. And I was wondering if you had any information. We're kind of currently investigation, investigating the disappearance of the children. And of course, the appearance of rats. He nods. Um, I can't tell you much, unfortunately. I was getting to the day's work. Seeing to the mill got stuck, so I was making sure it got unstuck. And they came from that direction. And he points towards the forest. You never had any dealings with them before, that? Occasionally have problems with rats, but I keep a couple, couple of good mousers on hand. Terriers are inside, thankfully. Do you know anything about this gentleman that came to the town saying he could rid you of the rats? Have you seen him? Talk to him? Oh, um... Wore some funny clothes. I know the mayor tried to shake me down for what he felt was my fair share. I did not pay. I had the dra my rats taken well in hand. Turns out if you don't piss off a crone, she doesn't send rats after you. Yes, that's there, yes. That's what I hear. And did you notice anything odd about the gentleman that was trying to rid you all of the rats? Seemed like a young fellow, but I mean, most enterprising people are. Maybe 20, perhaps? Young fellow in his 20s comes into town, says he rid you of rats, and. Does it, but doesn't, blah, blah, blah. Anything else that you can tell us about him? Did you notice? Was he... How do you say... Magical? I mean... More or less, I, I imagine if he's getting rid of rats on a whole ass village, probably has some sort of magic skills. It's not the sort of job for a regular rat catcher. Did you see how he rid the town of the rats? No, I, I kept my distance. I don't particularly like to go into town. People bring me grain, I mill it, and sell it back to them for a profit. Fair enough. Very well then. Um, I guess for funsies, I'll do an insight check. Okay. 
Make sure he's not lying. Thirteen. Thirteen? Uh, he does not appear to be lying to you. He does seem to be vaguely annoyed by this entire situation. The idea of this was not my circus nor my monkeys, and now I have mm. been attacked by said monkeys. Right. Is very much the vibe. Like, he did not want to get involved in this, and now he is, in fact, super involved in this. Well, I would highly recommend using something more than just the terriers that you have inside for these rats, but I mean, other than that, I don't think there's anything else to glean here unless you could think of anything. Cecil? Um, do you think there's anything magical about these creatures? Um, uh, about them, like on them? Uh, on, on the rat men? Right, I was actually, yeah, I was directing that more towards oh. towards uh, Marcus. Uh, I mean, I've never seen a rat that could walk on two feet and swing a sword before, if that's what you're asking. Um, uh, I'm going to try something then. I don't want to waste this ability, but I've never done it before. I suppose no time like the present. I'm going to do the font of magic and convert two sorcery points into a spell slot. Okay. And then I'm going to do that first. So it just converts two into one spell slot. Um, and then I'm going to get one of my spells. Should give me. I don't know why it didn't give me one of my spell spots back. Do something wrong. Uh, sorcery points cost two sorcery points. Oh, maybe I had to click it twice. I go back. I didn't set it up correctly. The, the point was it was supposed to give me a spell slot back, and I was trying to do detect magic. Okay. That's fine. Just mark it off manually. Okay. Um, yeah, you don't detect anything magic about them specifically. Like, they don't aren't okay. carrying a magic item. Anything in the, in the area itself? Uh, no. It seems pretty mundane. Okay. Well, this is the first time I've used this ability. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know how long it lasts. What about um, Marcus and myself? Uh, detect magic? Give me a minute. I'll look up the spell description. Again. You might get to pull up on here. I got it. Uh, duration 10 minutes. Um. Marcus seems to have a magical item. You seem to have a magical item. I have magical boots, to be specific. And I got the bag. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, that that told us really nothing. But at least I I know I can do that now. Yeah, I can't think of anything else. I think we've got all the information we're going to get at this point. Well, thank you for your time, sir. And we hope to bid you of your rat problems. He nods. Well, maybe you'll do a better job than the last guy. I certainly hope so. And for your village's sake. And with a plate on... I just go head back to the table. Okay. Well, 
Yay, we split the party and didn't die. No one died. But Yay. Not this time. Not this mm. time. Ironically, someone died before we split the party. <laughs> More dangerous this, together. That Yeah, that tells you something right there. There's no safety in numbers. No safety in numbers. All right, so you head back. Um, to the tavern. Um, dinner is provided as well as a large, a large tankard of, uh, tankard of beer. Not strong beer. This beer is very, it's very mild. This is definitely a home brewed, not strong, but stronger than water beer. Uh, you don't happen to have any whiskey after a day like today. I really could use one. I do. And he reaches in and uh, pulls out uh, the bottle as well as a, uh, I'll say a, a small glass. And he'll pour you a couple of fingers of whiskey. Perfect. Thank you so much. So, uh, is Danielle still eating, or has she slipped on up to bed? Uh, that's a good question. Danielle, are you still eating, or did you just kind of numb... Did you rush through and head up to bed? No, I'm still working on my meal. Probably almost done with my meat pie at this point, and slowly getting through. And I keep trying to say lager there, and it's like, that's not what she's... <laughs> <laughs> so uh as Marcus sits down he would tell Danielle uh so the miller had really no idea of what he had an idea of what's going on but he didn't have any idea of what's going on if you know what I mean Did you say it's been more than 10 minutes since we left the Miller's place? Oh yeah, for sure. It's probably a 20 minute walk back. Okay. And Marcus would eat his, I guess it's a meat pie, so you'd eat his meat pie. Okay. It is a meat pie. As would see so, which would seem like a huge pie to him. It's a significant pie for you. I'm sure they make gnome sizes. It seems yeah, like he's of. been pretty generous with the serving sizes because there's not a whole lot of people here. Cecil just kind of Cecil is just kind of haphazardly eating with one hand, and just going through his notes with the other in the book, you know, underlining things, crossing things out, making notes. Uh, Marcus would actually uh, look at the bartender and say, "So, do you happen to know of anyone who could sell us any types of goods?" Uh, looking for you know traveling gear we plan on heading out in the morning and i figure i could stop and get some things that we might need well um general store is kind of closed at the moment with everyone uh on the hunt but i mean i'm pretty good friends with tom if you have a list i can go just get it and leave him some money Fair enough, but you guys looking at, through your backpacks, is there anything that you can think of that you would need? Beyond the um, health potions. <laughs> yes, uh, let's see, um... So we have rations, we're set there. Um, I think we'd need... 
If there's no health potions, we do need some type of first aid kits just in the event that we do find the children and any of them need any type of first aid in general. Um, and let's say some, an extra blanket or two because I can fit what I need to in this bag. Do you happen to have, uh, and Marcus thinks for a second, and he's like an alchemist in town? Dabbles in unique potions of any sort? I, I mean, we, we do. Um, it's... Th is it, is it who I'm thinking it is? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Fair enough, fair enough. Really only uh, got the one person who makes potions. Um, I can get you some medicine kits, though. The, the, those are pretty reasonable. Um, the potions can be pretty pricey. That would be oh. much appreciated. Yes, I, I figure a first aid kit would be... What the hell are you doing? Sorry. No, you're good. I'm, I'm actually, I'm going through my stuff here. Uh, just making sure that there's nothing that I'm missing. Uh, do you know? Do you happen to know how much the potions are? Um, they could be about fifty gold piece. Fair enough. Assuming you didn't piss her off, or you could just owe you could just owe her. I don't recommend it. Not the sort of person no. you'd like to owe things to. No, no, no. I let's just say that we might already owe her. He just pulls your glass back and tops it off the whiskey and pushes it back towards you. Marcus gives him a, one of those thank you very much nods as he takes the whole thing down. Um, uh, just a first aid kit, I think we'd be good. I have myself five days of rations, so... I think where we're going there should be plenty. What about uh, tents? Tense, all right. Yeah, uh, I think uh, I don't know about these f folks, but probably I'm going to assume if I do not have one, four of them would be good. He nods. Two first aid kits. Okay. And that will do it. All right, so four tents and two healer skits. You got it. Let's see. That's eight. Looking up the prices, give me just a moment. Uh, I, I figured. Eight, so eighteen gold total would be probably the price for all of it. Might be able to get it to you for fifteen gold. We left we all given a certain amount of money. I uh, just I had basic money. From character background. Yep. Um, you can keep the three gold to yourself. If you can get it for fifteen, then consider the three gold to tip. Oh, appreciate it. He pockets the eighteen gold. Uh, with that, Marcus will 
finish his whiskey, finish what he needs left of the pie, and bid everyone a good night and head up on to his rest. Okay. Danielle's also heading upstairs at this point. Caesar will keep scribbling, pushing on his meat pie. I got to uh, ask someone a question, realize everybody's left, and go, oh, oh, okay. Starts packing up and heads upstairs. Uh, all right, and Marcus, you can add two healer's kits, 10 uses each. And four tents to your inventory, or disperse them as you, as you see fit. Yeah, I will. <laughs> um, so, you know, thanks to all of you talking about uh, meat pies all this time, I actually had to have one for dinner. <laughs> it wasn't good. Mm. It is. <laughs> Double checking something very quickly. How many mind flares are in each room? Yeah, you know. It's reverse Hydra. Marcus uh, is going to keep one of the healer's kits to himself. Mm hmm. And Cecil, I think he'll give you the other one. And then we now have <coughs> two-person tents. <coughs> the small you, have, one, you have four two-person tents. <laughs> we all like our privacy. You all have, yeah. all have your own privacy. Um, you don't share well yet. So I'm actually probably going to give those to you, Jim, uh, just because you can hold them in the bag. Okay. Hey, you never know. One of the tents might burn or something. Perfect. And that's we, how need I'll just... make, we need to make a decoy tent. Yes. <laughs> decoy tent. Marcus is going to be lay down in bed and we're going to take a long rest. Gideon, make me a constitution saving throw. Oh boy. Twenty-two. Okay. Everyone heads to bed. Pick up with Gideon first. Gideon. You wake up not in the bed. You wake up on the outskirts of town. Your shirt is missing, as are your shoes. You are wearing pants. Your hands and feet are muddy, and you have blood and feathers around your mouth. <laughs> I 
kind of just look down at myself and rub my mouth and see the blood and feathers and just look around confused and startled. I've woken up in a lot of strange places before. This is easily the second worst time. And it's, this is, it's early, like it's still streaky pre-dawn. I pinch myself just to see if I'm dreaming. You are not. Ow, shit. Um, I'm going to look down on the ground around me and I'm going to check for my footprints and see if I can backtrack and figure out what the hell happened to me. Uh, roll me a survival check. <clears throat> I'm okay with these. But not today. Oh, I have disadvantage on ability checks. Uh, you can remove one point of exhaustion. You did You did theoretically get a full night's sleep. Or rest, at least. Yeah, I still have disadvantage. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm completely confused. The tracks get confusing. They look like, you know, you see your footprints, and then there's some animal footprints. This is a mess. You do feel better, though. I'm going to stagger back towards the end and see if I can get back into my room without being noticed. Sure, roll a stealth check. <laughs> I trip over something and clatter to the ground and... Yeah, you kind of fall going up the stairs and you just curse like on accident, Shit. everyone can hear you. Bullets. Um, everyone, you are woken to this. You awaken to the sound of Gideon cursing. It is fucking early. It is very early. I am nope. hurrying into my room. Man, are you okay? What is going on? Yep, yeah, everything's fine. Oh. Yeah, Marcus, roll me a perception check. Perception. Twelve. You're pretty sure Gideon wasn't wearing a shirt, but, you know, whatever. Put on a shirt, jeez. Don't even answer, I'm... <laughs> I, I lock the door to my room and I start drawing water. <laughs> Did we see feathers around his mouth too, or were they all gone by the time he got to us? You can roll a perception check. All, all, all Marcus managed to clock was that he was not wearing a shirt. Jeez, everyone, everyone came to the door. It's just bumps in the night. It's nothing to be worried about. <laughs> we totally worried. We totally just fought rats, <laughs> and they were people. <laughs> All right, uh, Danielle, similar to um, Marcus, you clock that he is, uh, Gideon is not wearing a shirt. Um, that's, that's all you see. Uh, Cecil, you see a little bit more, you're a little closer to the ground. He is not wearing a shirt, he's not wearing the shoes, he looks like he's got blood spattered on his chest a little bit. Um, you don't see any feathers or anything, um, but you do see that he's got some blood spatter on him, and he does look like he's wearing no shirt, no shoes, and his feet are muddy. Lord, man, what happened to you? You've got blood on you. No, I don't. You should do it right there on your chest. No, I don't. From behind closed doors. <laughs> Were you attacked? Are you alright? I was stabbed and killed, of course I wasn't. It's leftovers from earlier. It seemed fresh. Under your shirt? It's hard to tell. With a 14, you only caught a glimpse of him. Okay. Alright. Okay. 
Red Wolf, if you if you do need anything, please holler something other than expletives. No promises. He still go back in his room, but he'll he'll listen for a bit before he tries to go back to sleep. It looks it like. Yeah, it sounds like uh, Mark, Mark, uh, Gideon is finally getting around to getting that bath. Doing sounds fine. Cecil goes back off again. Okay. Everyone else waking up at a more reason going to bed to wake up at a more reasonable time. Yeah. yeah. Yes, yeah. most definitely. You wake up to the smell of coffee, sausage, bacon, toast, eggs. I smell all the most wonderful things I've ever smelled in my life coming from downstairs. As Marcus makes his way down the stairs. What the hell? <laughs> As I hear everyone getting up and going downstairs, I assume I'm I've cleaned myself. Oh up yeah, by yeah, then. yeah. I mean, my my clothes and cloak are still a little uh, tattered and ratty, but I've, I smell better. Um. Yeah, I would say, um, yeah, you didn't sleep in your shoes, so you, you are able to find your shoes. That's good to know. Well, it's just double checking, making sure. Extremely fair. Just mm. trying to walk, walk my brain through the logic. I mean, maybe if we were out in the woods, you know, why, yeah. there was a bed. You don't want to muddy up the bed. Yeah. I mean, he bloodied the bed, but he didn't want to muddy it up. <laughs> yeah, once I'm cleaned up and everything and everyone went down ahead of me, I'm going to head down for breakfast. Yeah. You are starving. Good morning, everyone. Sleep well. Rest up. Nothing strange happened in the night. We don't know that yet. Insight check. Six. <laughs> <laughs> um, hmm. What is this going to be? Um... Oh. oh, actually, it really doesn't matter because the score is going to be the same no matter what. So let's see here. <gasps> You're <shit>. Yes! <laughs> Gideon's being sus in hell. Sus as hell. <laughs> Your ass just rolled this an unnatural one. An How do you do that? Unnatural. See, it's a negative one. <laughs> I rolled a two and I have a negative one charisma. You rolled a dirty one! I've got a lot of anxious energy to this morning. <laughs> Gideon's been sus. <laughs> Maybe it's because he just took a bath, but it seems like it might not be. Are you quite sure you're all right? You, you don't sound fine to me, friend. Are you okay? No, I'm dead twice over. Yes? Just, you know, making sure nothing strange happens and all kinds of strange things in the house. 
Town Ratman. <laughs> like to do an inside like kick as well. Oh, yes, please. <laughs> I mean, just don't fucking don't fail. Like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, Gideon's being again? no. It's the same check. He was just Gideon's being sus. What is wrong with you? Why are you acting so strange? Dude, we met two days me. ago, but... brought me back to life. What's normal about that? I mean, no, you're acting way off. I mean, completely yes. off. Oh, fine. If no one else experienced anything on. Is that bacon? I'd love some. Thank you. Yeah. So, Marcus <laughs> definitely caught that. No one else. What do you mean by nobody else? Like bacon? That's classic no, bacon. No, the gift no, of gods. no, no, Gideon, you're not skating around <laughs> this one. I'm not her. her, 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 her. You what know happened? exactly what you're talk we're talking about. You haven't started drinking yet. <laughs> oh God, where's my beer? No whiskey. No something stronger. What happened? Nothing, nothing at all. What happened? Nothing at all. You are lying. There's all sorts of strange things going on in this place. I just want to get to the bottom of it, that's all. It happened before dawn. <laughs> that caused so much I don't like scary. dying for nothing, I'm still exhausted. Bad dreams, that's all. Daniel's kind of like looking at Marcus like, yeah, I still don't believe this guy. So when are we heading out? A few days journey, right? A day and a half. Grove's Grove. Is there anything that we need to be worried about, Gideon? I mean, we're going after someone who can control children and rats. I think there's plenty to worry about there. Oh. We're kind of trying to make sure there aren't side effects to you coming back to life again. No, I'd very much like to know that as well. You bit by any of the rats? No, but I was stabbed by them several times. Marcus is going to restring his crossbow. Okay, that's a good idea. Because of rats. It's a good idea because of rats. Yes, Gideon. It's a good idea because of the rats. He's going to be staring at Gideon as he restrings his crossbow. I eat with a ravenous hunger. <laughs> Jeez, Gideon, you're so hungry. Why are you so hungry right now? I died yesterday. And that makes you hungry? Yes. Interesting, because I remember that not too long ago I died and I wasn't hungry. That's because you didn't come back. Well, we did. Different circumstances. How do you know that it was different circumstances? I shrug. Marcus just finishes stringing his crossbow. Slings it around his back. Probably will eat breakfast. Yeah. You know. All right. And he'll sit there and stare at Gideon the entire time. Danielle's just going to kind of, you know, sidestep the problem and enjoy her bacon and toast and whatever else is on offer here. Yeah, bacon, also coffee, toast, uh, eggs, sausage, and coffee. It's a very simple breakfast, but it's definitely 
you you don't get food of this quality outside of the country like especially considering most of when most of you are from like this is like a country breakfast straight from the farm I miss sausage Yeah, especially some of the, some of you have been living through rationing. Yes, but some of us also remember the good life. That is delicious. Cecil looks down. My shoelaces are untied. What? Delicious. I'm sorry, mouthful. Aren't you wearing boots? Man, that's why I was confused. <laughs> Wonder if I can get this sausage to go. Don't you think that would bring the rats out? <laughs> Good. I could use some payback. It's because yours. it went so well the last time. <laughs> I'm prepared now. I'd like to do, and uh, granted my knowledge of magic in general right now is, is fairly fresh, but I'd like to do an arcana check of those that have come back from the dead side effects. Sure. I mean, it would be more of a history check. Um, history then? Okay. Well, I've got advantage on both. It's about the same. So other one. Not advantage. Proficiency? Total either way. Yeah, proficiency. Hey, my goal. No history. Okay, so you're familiar with various tales of these several states of undeath. There's vampires. Um, there's mummies, there's, um, like, Frankenstein creatures. There's actually a fairly new book that you read, um, about Frankenstein, Dr. Frankenstein building a monster from bits of corpses. Um, you're aware of zombies and revenants? None of those seem to fit Gideon, who is actually deprived of his regular layer of, layer of grime seems to be in decentish health still a bit shaggy i haven't shaved off my i mean yeah he's a, beard. he's a bit shaggy but he's not he, he's clean and looks actually better than he did before he died in some ways the magic of a good path. You know, fresh air, a decent bath, a good breakfast, coffee. You did not get your whiskey for breakfast. <laughs> The guy at the bar is on my side. <laughs> He's heard a lot of you talk about someone being dead yesterday uh, and has decided not to serve you, as is his right as a barkeep. <laughs> oh, come on now. There's no need to be like that. I, I think he has plenty of good reason to be like that myself. Look, your friend got tents and healing kits, and you're talking about well, going. Oh, that's in a smart idea. 
I'm talking about going into the woods, I don't think whiskey is the proper breakfast for you. You can have coffee, water, or tea. What about if I take it to go and I'll hold up my flask? I would kill for a nice English tea. Okay, he heads to the back. Um, you do get a tea. Um, it is not per particularly English. Mm. And tea might be a strong word. It might be more infused hot water with various garden herbs. It tastes good. Flaky water. It, it tastes good. It's still leaf water, but it's not like tea. It is what this universe has just... Yeah, it, it is what this universe has decided tea is. Um, it's not proper tea, though. It's not home tea. He's full sip it. Mmm. Yes. Oh, thank you. Oh, that hits the spot. Whimpers slowly inside. <laughs> <laughs> the coffee is coffee, though. Some used to reason. having terrible tea, aren't I? You are pretty used to having terrible tea. Rationing. Friend, rationing. Um, coffee is actually kind of a luxury at this point. Um... But breakfast is had, and you all head out to the woods. To the woods we go. To the woods you go. Okay. And as you go to seek your fortune in the woods, uh, we are going to call it for tonight. I know it's another early game. Um, I, like I said, I am still a little burnt out from the, the last couple weeks. Uh, next week we should be back on schedule with, you know, normal length games. That's fun. Well. Was a fun night. <laughs> <laughs> and nobody died. And nobody died. Nothing Probably. terrible happened no at all. Probably <laughs> nobody died. Probably nobody died. Well, we know Gideon was eating birds. Maybe. Maybe it was a bird. No one knows no such thing. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> he, is a, he is a wear gerbil. That's all there is to it. A wear gerbil? <laughs> wear space hamster. <laughs> oversized wear gerbil. I, th I think we've got enough oversized rodents right now. <laughs> we have something other than gerbils. What? Yeah, why can't you be like a chinchilla? <laughs> or explain the aversion to bats. <laughs> Waiting for him to be able to like jump to the middle roof now, because that would be funny. I'd love to see him. Alrighty, ladies and gents, I'm going to get out. I'm I, tired. Yeah, same. That's. Uh... Have All a good right. night, all. Have a good night, everyone. Night. Have a good night. Good night. Thanks for game. Yeah.